Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any video lessons from Rao's IS Study Circle. Join the official Telegram channel of Rao's IS Study Circle to stay updated and get all the materials on Telegram. The link to the channel can be found in the description box. Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice. Here we take up MCQs based on important articles and news from the Hindu and the Indian Express newspaper. Topics that we are going to discuss today are displayed on your screen. Let's begin the discussion. Now the first question in today's discussion is related to this news article. This was appeared in the Hindu newspaper. It is related to the Parliamentary Standing Committee recently raised data privacy concerns in draft telecom law. Now before taking up the practice question, if you look at the previous year question papers, UPSC has generally asked questions related to the committees, its functions, compositions, etc. in the prelims examination. For example, look at this question. This was asked in year 2019. Now let's come to the practice question. Here you have to identify the correct statements with respect to departmentally related standing committees that is DRSCs. Now the first statement is a minister is eligible to be nominated as a member of any of the standing committee. Now the second statement is each standing committee consists of 20 members from Lok Sabha and 10 members from Rajya Sabha. Now before answering this question, let me briefly tell you about DRSCs. 17 departmentally related standing committees were set up in the parliament in year 1993 on the recommendations of the Rules Committee of the Lok Sabha. In 2004, seven more such committees were set up, thus increasing their number from 17 to 24. The main objective of the standing committees is to secure more accountability of the executive, that is Council of Ministers, to the parliament, particularly financial accountability. They also assist the parliament in debating the budget more effectively. Now let's come to the first statement. A minister is eligible to be nominated as a member of any of the standing committees. This statement is incorrect as a minister is not eligible to be nominated as a member of any of the standing committees. In case a member after his nomination to any of the standing committees is appointed a minister, he then ceases to be a member of the committee. Another important fact is that the term of office of each committee is one year from the date of its constitution. Now the second statement is each standing committee consists of 20 members from Lok Sabha and 10 members from Rajya Sabha. Again this statement is incorrect as there are total 31 members in each standing committee. 21 from Lok Sabha and 10 from Rajya Sabha. Now here we have to identify the correct statements. But both these statements are incorrect, so our correct answer is G. That is neither one nor two. Now, our next question of today's discussion is from this article which appeared in the Hindu newspaper. It is related to the recent disqualification of SP leader Azam Khan as MLA after conviction in hate speech case. Now, from this previous year question which was based on parliament Prevention of Disqualification Act 1959, which came in year 2019, we have seen that UPSC has asked the question on disqualification, etc. So this is an important theme. Now let's come to the practice question. Here you have to identify the correct statements with respect to representation of the People Act 1951. Now here most of you are already aware about the representation of the People Act 1951 deals with the actual conduct of elections to the houses or house of the parliament and houses or houses of the legislature of each state. Qualifications and disqualifications for the membership of these houses, the corrupt practices and other election offenses. Now let's come to the first statement. A person convicted of any offense and sentenced to imprisonment for varying terms under section 8.1 shall not be disqualified from the date of conviction. This statement is incorrect as a person convicted of any offence and sentenced to imprisonment for varying terms under section 8.1, 8.2 and 8.3 of RPA Act 1951 shall be disqualified from the date of conviction and 
shall continue to be disqualified for a further period of six years since his or her release. Now let's come to the second statement. Section 8.4 of the RPA Act allows convicted lawmakers a six-month period for appealing to the higher court and getting a stay. Again, this statement is incorrect. As we have seen in Lily Thomas v. Union of India 2013, Supreme Court ruled that any MP, MLA, MLC convicted of a crime and given a minimum of two years imprisonment would lose the membership of the House with immediate effect without being given three months time for appeal as was the case before. So this statement is incorrect. Also, it might be interesting to note that the court also struck down Section 8.4 of the RPA Act as unconstitutional. Now, Section 8.4 of the RPA Act allowed convicted lawmakers a three-month period for appealing to the higher court and getting a stay. So both these statements are incorrect and here we have to identify the correct statements. So our correct answer is D, that is neither one nor two. Now, the inspiration of our next question is from this article from the Indian Express. And this article is about the Samarkand Declaration. As you all know that UPSC has asked multiple questions on various declaration, its respective organization, etc. This question is from the year 2015. Now here we have to identify that Samarkand Declaration is related to which of the following organizations. Option A, G20. Option B, Shanghai Corporation Organization that is SCO. Option C, East Asia Summit and option D, South Asian Association for Regional Corporation. Now the correct option is option B, that is Shanghai Corporation Organization, that is SEO. The Shanghai Corporation Organization Summit 2022 was held in Samarkand, Uzbekistan. This declaration was signed by the member states. As a UPSC aspirant, you should also remember the member states of the SEO. There are total eight member states of the SEO and the newly edition Iran, that will be the ninth member, will be included in the permanent member list from 2023. The main highlight of the Samarkand Declaration is that it advocated commitment to peaceful settlement of differences and disputes between countries through dialogue and consultation. Another important fact which is important for you is that India takes over presidency of the SEO for 2022. Now, the inspiration of our next question is from this article from the Hindu newspaper. And this article talks about the concerns over the toxic foam and pollution in the Yamuna River ahead of Chhat Puja. As you all know that UPSC has always framed questions on geographical features like landforms, rivers, ecosystem, etc. And this question is from the year 2017 and it is based on tributaries of Godavari. Now let's come to the practice question. Here you have to find out which of the following are tributaries of Yamuna River. First is Chambal, second is Sin, third is Son and fourth is Kin. Now as you know, Yamuna is the westernmost and the longest tributary of the Ganga River and it has its source in the Yamunotri glacier on the western slopes of Bandarbun's range. It joins the Ganga at Priyag. It is joined by the Chambal, Sin, Betwa and Kin on its right bank which originates from the peninsular plateau, while the Hinden, Rind, Sengar and Varuna joins it on its left bank. Much of its water feeds the western and eastern Yamuna and the Agra canals for irrigation purposes. The Son is a large south bank tributary of the Ganga, originating in the Amarkantak plateau, after forming a series of waterfalls at the edge of the plateau. It reaches Arra, west of Patna, to joins the Ganga. Now, as you know that Son is a large south bank tributary of Ganga, you can easily eliminate option A, option B, and option D. So, you left with only one option, and that is the correct option, that is option C, 1, 2, and 4. Chambal, Sin, and Kin are tributaries of Yamuna River. Now the next question is based on this article from the Indian Express and this article is about the Mauna Loa which is the world largest volcano and it is sending the signal that it may erupt. Now as you know that UPSC has asked questions based on natural phenomena like dewdrops, Indian Ocean Dipole 
and this question which is about the dew drop came in year 2019 now let's come to the practice question here you have to identify the incorrect statements with respect to the types of volcanoes the first one is the caldera are the largest of all the volcanoes on the earth second statement is shield volcanoes are the most explosive of the earth's volcanoes and the last statement is the composite volcanoes are characterized by eruptions of cooler and more viscous lavas than basalt now as you know the volcanoes are classified on the basis of nature of eruption and the forms developed at the surface the first one is shield volcano they are the largest of all the volcanoes on the earth the hawaiian volcanoes are the most famous example these volcanoes are mostly made up of basalt a type of lava that is very fluid when erupted for this reason these volcanoes are not very steep they become explosive if somehow water gets into the vent otherwise they are characterized by low explosivity now with this you can see that shield volcano are the largest one not the caldera so here statement 1 is incorrect now calderas are the most explosive of the earth's volcanoes they are usually so explosive that when they erupt they tend to collapse on themselves rather than building any tall structure the collapsed depressions are called calderas their explosiveness indicates that the magma chamber supplying the lava is not only huge but is also in close vicinity so with this you can see that shield volcanoes are not the most explosive ones the most explosive volcanoes are the caldera ones so here statement 2 is incorrect now let's come to the last one composite volcanoes are characterized by eruptions of cooler and more viscous lavas than basalt these volcanoes often result in explosive eruptions along with lava large quantities of pyroclastic material and ashes find their way to the ground this material accumulates in the vicinity of the vent openings leading to formation of layers and this makes the mount appears as composite volcanoes so the third statement is correct so here you have to identify the incorrect statements so both statement 1 and statement 2 both are incorrect so our correct answer is a 1 and 2 only now the next question is based on this article from the indian express according to this article after delhi university transgenic hybrid mustard india's biotechnology regulator is set to recommend the environmental release of genetically modified cotton of german multinational company bayer ag that allows farmers to spray the herbicide glyphosate as you have seen upsc has always covered new technology or inventions in the previous prelims examination like in year 2021 there was a question on india's first biotech crop technology that is bolgard 1 and bolgard 2 now let's come to the practice question consider the following statements statement 1 is Bolga 2 Roundup Ready Flex that is BG2 RRF cotton contains two alien genes isolated from two different soil bacteria. Second statement is herbicide glyphosate cannot be applied on normal cotton. Here you have to identify the correct statement. Transgenic cotton BG2 RRF contain three alien genes. The first two CRY1 AC and CRY2 AB. being isolated from a soil bacterium bacillus thuringiensis or bt the third gene cp4 epsps is sourced from another soil bacterium that is agrobacterium tomophaceans so unlike the normal cotton plants this variety is tolerant to the application of herbicide glyphosate this incorporation makes the crop tolerant to glyphosate so statement 1 is incorrect now the second statement The herbicide glyphosate cannot be applied on normal cotton. This statement is correct as this chemical does not distinguish between the crops and the weeds, so it cannot be applied on normal cotton. So here you have to identify the correct statement. So only statement two is correct. So our answer is option B, two only. That's all for today. Stay tuned for more such updates.